Hello everyone, this is Alice Davis and I'm here with Led by Faith today. We're going to be looking at a harvest of integrity. But first, let's go to the Father. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you that by having your loving kindness abiding on the inside of us and that we have your attributes in us because you live in us by your Holy Spirit who was shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. We are filled up to overflowing. We thank you, Father, for virtue and all these different assets, facets and sides of you being seen, shown and known through your loving kindness. We thank you for your heart. We praise you, Father, that your heart is everything to us and this we pray in jesus name amen glory to god well today we are looking at a harvest of integrity a harvest of integrity and what would i mean by a harvest of integrity. Boy, I can really go there. <laughs> but I won't. In our text for this series is Psalm 63, 3. And this is in the King James Version. It says, Because of your loving kindness, is better than life, my lips shall praise you. When your cup is full to overflowing, you are full of thankfulness. You are, th you are full of praise. And it, it comes from a heart that is praiseworthy. Glory to God. We're going to kind of recap what we've been through, and we're going to go even further. Glory to God. We see in Ruth one twenty two, so Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter in law, with her, which returned out of the country of Moab, which is the land of Lot, and his two daughters, and they came to Bethlehem, in the beginning of harvest. Now she comes to town. In the beginning of harvest, integrity means wholeness, entireness, and unbrokenness, an unbroken state, the entire unimpaired state of anything, particularly of the mind, moral soundness, or purity, incorruptness, uprightness, and honesty. Ruth had walked out the integrity of her own heart. She had already made the decision to stay with her mother-in-law wherever she would go, to live wherever she lived and serve the same God that she served. She was able to do this by the integrity that was in her own heart. In Proverbs 10, 9, it says, He that walketh uprightly walketh surely. In Psalm 15, 1, in the Passion Translation, it's a poetic song by King David. It says, Lord, who dares to dwell with you? Who presumes the privilege of being close to you, living next to you? In your shining place of glory. Who are those who daily dwell in the life of the Holy Spirit? They are passionate and wholehearted, always sincere and always speaking the truth. For their hearts are trustworthy. Ruth's values were held in high esteem among Boaz, Naomi, and the people at their church, and the people in town, 
from the very first time he saw her, she was the apple of his eye. In Proverbs 2, 7, it says in the message, and here's why. God gives out wisdom free. It's plain spoken in knowledge and understanding. He's a rich mine of common sense. <laughs> For those who live well, a personal bodyguard to the candid and sincere. He keeps his eye on all who live honestly and pay special attention to his loyally committed ones. That's awesome. Proverbs 4.11 in the Amplified Classic says, and here's why. God gives out wisdom free. Is plain, is plain spoken in knowledge and understanding. He's a rich mind of common sense for those who live well. I think those are both the same translation. <laughs> I get excited. <laughs> right living produces a life of heart and soul. Let's go see what Proverbs 4.11 says. Proverbs 4.11 says, I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in right paths. Glory to God. Right living produces a life of heart and soul peace. Your heart is peaceful. Your mind is at ease. And your thoughts are focused. That's what happens when you have your priorities straight. There is a woman in the New Testament that it, Jesus called her in American language, in the English language, a dog. I don't know that that's exactly what he was, the word that he was using in Greek or Hebrew. Or even Aramaic. But the word dog in that scripture, talking about thinking correctly, that Jesus, when he told that woman that she, he called her a dog. Let's see, I have that scripture up. Let's see. Uh... He called her a dog. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician woman by nation. By nation. That was the country she came from. And she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. And Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled, for it is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it unto the dogs. In that scripture, when I studied it out, what he was talking about was her thinking. He was saying she didn't have right thinking. Now, she was a Syrophoenician, and Ruth was a virtuous woman. Glory to God. And that's the difference. Ruth had her priorities straight. Ruth's priorities are just as straight as they can be. Praise God. And so is Boaz's. <laughs> Doesn't mean everybody else's is, but we're talking about Boaz and Ruth.
In Proverbs 21, 21, in the Passion Translation, it says, The lovers of God who chase after righteousness will find all their dreams come true, an abundant life drenched with favor and a fountain that overflows with satisfaction. Their thoughts were right. Their priorities were straight. Boaz was known for doing things with honor in excellence, and Ruth was known for being virtuous. In having these qualities, God was able to use them to bring in Obed into the picture. The one in whose house the Ark of the Covenant would rest for several months. He, it rested there for three months and the number three stands for resurrection it was god saying that the covenant that he made with is being resurrected again well it had, didn't get resurrected but once but it got resurrected and that's what the three months stands for so what Boaz and Ruth, you know how grandparents, I knew my great grandpa, my great grandfather on my grandfather's side of the house, and he was a pastor. He was a pastor, and he pastored for probably 60 years. But he prayed over me, and he taught me things. He passed on. He passed down things about Jesus and the faith that I had that I had stayed with all the days of my life. And when you've got that's what Ruth and Boaz did with they had Obed. Obed gave birth to Jesse. Well, he begat him, okay? He didn't give birth to him. <laughs> But his wife did. But Obed gave birth, gave, begat Jesse, uh, Jesse, and Jesse is the one who had David. Now he had, I think it was seven or eight other sons, seven other sons, when David finally got there. And it's funny that David would be number eight in line and that is a new beginning I just thought about that that is good God is so good there is not a detail in the Bible Jesus never spoke a word that didn't matter everything he said he had a reason a purpose for saying it or doing it because he only thought what the Father thinks, and he only did what he saw the Father do. Well, he had a part, Father God had a purpose for Boaz and Ruth. They were the mo they were virtuous, they were honorable. He was honorable and excellent in everything he did. He sat in the gate of the city when he was waiting on his the other near kinsmen. Yeah. And he told everybody in town and everybody in the church, she's a virtuous woman. Glory to God. In having these qualities, they were walking them out. Obed saw them. Obed watched them daily being honorable and, and, and excellent in all that they did, being virtuous, truthful, and noble, courageous. Glory to God. That's what they pass down. You pass down to your children what you do. What you do every day, your children are seeing it. The one in whose house the Ark of the Covenant would rest for several months. It rested there for three months. 
What Boaz and Ruth had been walking in was the covenant life of God. And they had brought up Obed-Edom to walk in that way as well. It says in Proverbs that you train up a child in the way that he should go, and he won't depart from it. In Ruth 22, 422, excuse me, says, And Obed begat Jesse, and Jesse begat David. Obed was David's grandfather, great, great grandfather. And Ruth, okay, Obed was David's grandfather, and Boaz was David's great grandfather. And Ruth was his great grandmother. Now here's Obed helping him to get the Ark of the Covenant over there. If you go study it out, Obed is with them when they're moving the covenant, and David decided he didn't want it in his. God had entrusted the Ark of the Covenant over to David, and David had been born from a lineage of virtue, honor, and excellence. That's how his parents behaved. It was vitally important that Boaz and Ruth got married. Reason being was they was so they could give birth to Obed Edom. <laughs> Why? Go to Second Samuel six, ten through twelve in the Amplified Classic. So David was not willing to take the ark of the Lord. Have your children ever not been willing to walk in the way of the Lord? They, will, they can. To him, into the city of David, but he took it aside into the house of Obed-Edom. He wouldn't put, at first, he wouldn't put the ark of the covenant in the city of David. He was a teenager. <laughs> but he grew up quickly. <laughs> but he put the Ark of the Covenant aside into the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite. And the Ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite for three months. And the Lord blessed Pay close attention to that. The Ark of the Covenant is resting in the house of Obed-Edom, and God blessed his whole household. Now, King David was told, The Lord has blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that belongs to him, his bank accounts, his vehicles, his storage places, his finances, his monies, his store play, his storage place. So David went and brought up the Ark of... <laughs> David goes and gets the Ark of the Covenant and brings it into the city of David <laughs> with rejoicing and gladness. And once Obed was David's great-grandfather, and David set the Ark of the Covenant in Obed's house and saw the manifestation of the blessing in and on Obed's family. And in his home, David came back and wanted the Ark of the Covenant resting in his home. <laughs> Anywhere the covenant rests, there is peace, prosperity, health, and wholeness. Everyone's children should be able to see the blessing of the Lord all over their parents. Just like David saw the blessing all over Obed and his family and his household. That is how it's done and that's how it gets passed down from generation to generation. 
When David saw what his grandfather had, which was the manifestation of the blessing, all over him, his family and his home, David wasn't willing to live without it anymore. When your children see the blessing of God all over you, all in your life, they know you couldn't have done those things. It had to be God. It had to be God. So let God do what God does best and manifest His covenant in your life. With obed Edom, He did just that, and it showed David what he really had. That's my that's being that's being blessed, that's being salty, that's having the light shining through your life. And when your children see it, they'll come to you and they'll want to know, what is it that's going on with you? I want what you have. I want the peace and joy that you have, and I want to know what you do to have it. And then you can give them Jesus. And when they receive Jesus, it will be coming from a lineage of honor, excellence, and virtue. Just like Boaz and Ruth passed down their honor, excellence, and their virtue. And if that's what you want in your house, you can have it. God will give it to you. Ruth and Boaz have their priorities straight. They're walking the walk and talking the talk. They're doing what they're supposed to be doing. And they didn't have to go out and... They just went out and were themselves. That's what being honest and humble is. It's just be who you are. And when others see who you really are, they'll know that it's God that's living on the inside of you. For greater is he that's on the inside than he that's on the outside. He does exceedingly abundantly above anything you could ask, think, hope, or dream of. He can bring you in harvests like you never thought before. So just trust Him. Look to Him. And if it's God today, it'll be God tomorrow. You just rest in Him and let the covenant do what it does. Because God is the one working in it, through it, and to you. He'll get it in your life. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this week talking and discussing about Ruth and Boaz and all the things, all the good things God is doing in their lives. God can get miracles done, and He can do it suddenly. So look for it, expect it, and it'll happen. Glory to God. Well, I trust you'll be blessed coming in and blessed going out. And in everything you set your hand to today and all through the weekend, be led by faith.